So hey, how you doing? I am doing great because I'm getting to play with Wave State 2.0. It is so cool to see what's going on under the hood of Wave State with visual help. Makes a huge, huge difference, let me tell you. Uh, welcome. My name is John Skippy Limkul. Hands together, head bowed. Nice to see you. Welcome. So I, since 1988, I've been a programmer for Korg. I've worked on a pretty large number of their products, making patches and presets and samples and it's been a wonderful relationship with them for a long time. Uh, in 2009, I started my own company, PluginGuru.com, where I make sample libraries and presets for plugins. I, I don't do a lot of videos on hardware, uh, but I probably should do more on hardware because I'm going to support WaveState. With this update to WaveState for 2.0, it adds some pretty cool features. For one thing, it has four gigabytes of memory, so you can load your own samples, or you can load samples <clears throat> made by someone else, such as myself. So I'm doing three videos. This video is quick overview of what we have, a few tips along the way on, on updating and so forth. Uh, the second video will be much more in depth with the software, getting into actual wave sequencing and loading programs and doing all that kind of crazy stuff. And the third video is on the two libraries I have released for WaveState. I've released Mega Magic Pads, Volume 1, and Mega Magic Dreams. Two libraries that I love and that are really cool to play with in WaveState. So I will show those in the third video. We'll talk about them a little bit as we go along here. Uh, because they're they're cool to it's cool to add samples to WaveState. But I will tell you this: if you haven't worked with your WaveState a lot, just having software will now all of a sudden open up all sorts of doors to play with what's here. Because there is a massive amount of data inside WaveState before you add anything to it. Okay? So, let's start at the top. Updating to 2.0 is pretty easy. The one thing that might catch you is what version of WaveState you have in your existing WaveState. If it's not 1.0.6 or later, you'll need to update to version 1.0.6 first, and then you can update to 2.0. It's actually 2.0.1 right now. The way to find this out, let's go to top-down view. Uh, if you go to utility and you hold down shift and then use these arrows to the right and left, the very last arrow in the, the little dot in the screen will tell you the version number. And if it says 1.0.5 or earlier, you're going to need to upgrade to 1.0.6 first. Um, they added the ability for USB to talk in a network protocol, not MIDI, which is really, really cool. Um, and so from 1.6 forward, it's able to do this network talking and do all this configuration stuff under the hood. It didn't have that when it first came out. So you will want to get upgraded to 1.0.6 or later. And then if that's the case, then when you download the software, as I have done um, right here, you will have a folder which gives you three separate components that you can install. One of them is the actual updater, which if you double click and go through the process, uh, you get the wave state updater. If you double click, it says waiting for device. If it sees the device like this, now you can update. Um, if it doesn't see this, then you might have an earlier version of Wave State and need to get it to work. But if you've got it connected via USB, um, you'll get to this point, you just hit start, go get yourself a coffee or something like that while it updates. It'll come back and it's all updated and ready to go. So that is the first part. The second part is the Wave State Editor Librarian. And then the third part is Sample Builder. And those two are applications added to your computer, the editor librarian is what we're looking at right here, which gives you the ability to see all of the performances, programs, wave sequences, scales, effect presets, set lists, if you want to make your own set lists. And it has an all data tab here in case you want to export a bundle 
of multiple of all these different things. You can use the all to like select what you want it to export and then go under file and say, um, export a bundle. You have to select stuff first. But if I have a whole bunch of these and I select those like this, now I can say export bundle. Right now it's just performances, but if I'm on all data, I can have something like this where it's like effects and programs and performances and all this stuff. It'll export that as a single bundle. So that way it will get all this data saved to a file. And when someone imports, it will import all of that data. So it's really, really handy and nice that they work that way. Okay. Uh, like I said, second video, we're going to get into editor and we're going to make stuff from scratch and play around with this a little bit more, but this is just an overview. Okay. So if you have everything connected and your wave state is updated, when you run the sample, when you run the editor librarian, it will pop up and look pretty much like this. And I would suggest going under preferences. I really like under the performance selection to use select and list also selects on the synth. This way you don't have to double click to load a patch. You just go select and they play. And just like the, the when you're working with the wave state itself, you can go over here, choose another patch, and it won't cut off the other one that was playing. It's only for two patches, but it's cool. I want to give a really mad shout out to Korg and Korg R D for keeping the author names here, so you get to see who made what. You can click up here to choose by collection, category, or author if you want to go through all the patches of someone and see what one person's exp This is a. I learned this with the Wave Station in the '90s. Uh, the Wave Station is a <laughs> very personal journey. Each person that sits at this, if you sit and make patches. If you get into this machine and you start to connect to it, what you make is going to be different than what anybody else makes. It really can take on your personality and what you like in sounds. And so it's really fun to just go through and choose. Peter Schwartz went nuts. Um, Laurent Verona's also did a whole lot of stuff uh, as, as Airwave. He did some really, really cool. You get into some of these um, killer stuff. And then be able to go editor and see what's going on. There's, there's a whole lesson of schooling inside here to see what's going on. Crazy, crazy stuff. So play with everything. The performances are the big showcase things that you call up that do all the cool stuff. So just be on the performance tab. And uh, Dan Phillips, he basically managed this process with Andy. The two of them are the masterminds behind getting this to be a reality. And so they 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 have some patches in here that came out great. John Bowen. My dear brother from another mother, he did the, the actual samples in the original wave station back in the day. He worked on this. A whole bunch of people were able to contribute to this. So it's, it's a really, really cool project. It was really fun to work with these dear friends of mine. We've been friends for many, many years at this point on this. And so that's the editor librarian. The sample builder, as you can see, it, it looks pretty basic. You have just like the editor librarian, you have two tabs. You can use command one and two to change between the two. Let me load a bank so you can see how this works. Let's say open bank. This is actually the bundle bank, which contains all the samples for Mega Magic Dreams and Mega Magic Pads in a single, if you buy the bundle, it puts the two together, which is a little bit easier to set up. We'll talk about that in a minute. But basically, if you go to multi-sample, after, well, you can just double click one of these to go to, uh, let's say, Battleborn. Now, as you can see, there's six different samples for this. You can see each of the samples. If your samples have loop point information, that is imported in when it loads. If your samples have a naming at the end of the samples for all of these samples for sampling, it automatically will map them across the keyboard for you. So it makes it's really nice to go through 
pick out what the pitch is of your samples. So when you drag them, you, you actually can't drag. You have to go over here to the import wave files. And now you can choose a handful. Here, let's do this. Let's say new multi-sample, right? So it's blank. If we say import wave, and I go over here and I let's just choose this um, alien landscape. This is the loop version where it doesn't have the attack part. Say load those. It will map them across the keyboard because the, the, the pitch of the samples is in the sample names at the very end. Now, the way it works, you have to name this, give yourself author credit and stuff like that, and you have to save it as a multi-sample to your hard drive before it will show up in the bank list. Um, it's not one of these things where it's retaining this in memory. If you actually look here, let's do this. If I open up, say, Mega Magic Dreams, this is the library I built, and you go into the samples folder, and let's organize it by a list like this. Right here is the bank file, but below this is a multi sample file for every one of the multi samples that I had to make for it to work. So you have to do that. If I close this, okay, yeah, if I open up just the Omega Magic Dreams by itself, it will load up all of these samples, but these are all based on files on the, on the hard drive. That's the way it works. So once you build a multi-sample, you have to go the next step of saving the multi-sample, and then you can say new multi-sample, make another multi-sample, save it, and as you do that, they will accrue into the bank. Now, like I said, I have Mega Magic Dreams and Mega Magic Pads. And I loaded just dreams on purpose because I'm going to show you, if you go up here, there's an option on the bank page that says add multi-samples. And this allows you to select this. And let's go over to Mega Magic Pads and go to the samples. And now you can see all the multi-samples show up and just select one, then shift select all of them and sit open. And it will now select and add all of those now I'm ready to send all of those samples over. If I hit send a bank, it will start the protocol talk. It will start transmitting. It takes it a couple minutes, maybe, for a gigabyte to be sent. You have four gigabytes to work with. And by doing this, you can build up your own custom bank, save your bank and all that kind of stuff if you want to save it. That's how it works. So by using this, you can load your own samples, map them across the keyboard, save them as multi-sample presets, and then set them up in a bank that you would then send over to the wave state. Each time you send a bank, it's going to erase what was there and replace it with this bank. There's no multiple banks inside of the wave state, it's just one bank. So whatever is in this list is what will show up inside of wave state when you transmit. Okay. So that's all there is to it. It's super fun to work with. It's really cool to be able to put your own samples into this. It's really, really cool to be able to go to the editor. Let's go back over here. and It's great to be able to see the actual editor and see what's going on, right? So the next video, we will start diving into playing with a patch and making a patch from scratch, okay? So hope this helped. It's a free update. If you just have to own a wave state, um, it's a really, really nice thing to have. Like I said, our, our tools were very, very coarse compared to this for making the patches we did for the factory voicing. So you can get really deep and get lost really quickly with this. So it's wonderful to have software to connect to the wave state. Makes you want to own one, doesn't it? It's pretty cool. All right. So see you in the next video.